Hello, my name is Jean Alvarez. About 15 years ago, I had breast cancer and spent uh, nine months in treatment. As any cancer survivor will tell you, it was a challenging experience, but on the other hand, I'm a pretty positive person, and so I went through that whole time with my eyes set on the end of treatment, when my hair would grow back and food would begin to taste good again and my life would return to normal. Well, a few months after my last chemo treatment, I began to realize that things weren't getting better. In fact, in lots of ways, I was worse. For example, after a lifetime of sleeping easily and for long hours, I suddenly had severe insomnia. It would take me several hours to fall asleep, and then if I woke up during the night, it would take me several more hours to fall back to sleep. Probably because of that, fatigue began to feel like it would never end. I had cognitive problems that became just undeniable. I was working as a consultant to not-for-profit organizations and I started to be afraid that I would have to stop working. And finally, the big blast of depression that many of us experience as treatment ends had settled in as a long-term, low-grade depression. I continued to talk with my oncologist and other physicians, and they were all wonderful and supportive and tried several medications they thought might help. But the truth is, there's no treatment that's generally successful with these symptoms, and so I struggled on, really with no improvement. Eventually, I got clear that all of my symptoms were brain-related. Though I'm a social psychologist with no particular expertise in the brain, I was energized by having a way to think about what had happened to me and having a field I could read about in hopes of figuring out how I might recover or at least improve. That reading led me to two wonderful learnings. First, unlike what neuroscientists used to think, the brain is not hardwired. It's changeable, or what neuroscientists call plastic, throughout the lifespan. This means that damage that has happened during cancer and cancer treatment ought to be correctable if only we can find an effective intervention. The second learning was that EEG biofeedback, or sometimes called neurofeedback, is a technology that uses information about the brain's electrical activity to activate the brain's plasticity. With this technology, the brain is able to become aware of what it's doing and then make changes to function more efficiently and more effectively. So, of course, I tried neurofeedback. My first experience was with a fairly traditional neurofeedback approach, and while it was fun and interesting, it didn't improve my symptoms, but it did convince me that neurofeedback is a powerful technology. My next experience with a neurofeedback program called Neurooptimal was incredible. In three sessions, my sleep was clearly normalizing, and um, this was after seven and a half years of, ins of insomnia. In 10 sessions, the depression was gone. I heard myself laugh one day and I thought, oh man, this is joy. I haven't felt this in seven years. And with the changes in sleep and mood, my fatigue began to improve. And more slowly, but unquestionably, my cognitive function was getting better. As you can imagine, I was ecstatic and relieved to feel confident in my work again. But I come from a family of scientists and I found that I couldn't be comfortable just going back to life as usual. I wanted to know whether I was just one unique lucky person whose brain responded to neurofeedback, or whether this approach might offer a solution to the thousands of other cancer survivors facing the same problems that I had struggled with. So I purchased my own equipment and with some colleagues designed a study on 23 breast cancer survivors experiencing chemo brain symptoms following treatment. We measured cognitive impairment, fatigue, sleep impairment, and emotional distress, particularly anxiety and depression. So here's a quick summary. Before neurofeedback, the participants showed serious dysfunction on all measures compared with the normal population. But after 20 sessions with Neurooptimal, 
our participants were similar to the normal population on any of the sleep measures, the, emo the emotional measures, the fatigue measure, and three of the four cognitive testing scales that we measured. I was excited about these results. To the best of my knowledge, neurofeedback is the only restorative intervention, that is, an approach that actually corrects what has gone wrong in the brain, restoring it to its precursor level of functioning. I know firsthand what it's like to expect a return to normal once your treatment is over, and I know how terrible it is when that doesn't happen. Based on all I know and learned, Neurooptimal can almost always facilitate that return to normal. If you'd like to learn more, please read it, reach out to me at the number on the screen or visit clevelandneurofeedback.com to learn more. If you're suffering through chemo brain, it's my hope that you'll give Neurooptimal a try. There's not much to lose and a whole lot to gain. I really look forward to hearing from you.